it's okay. So, hi everyone. My name is Paul and I'm a security researcher at Talos Cisco, the threat intelligence part of, of Cisco. And I work on malware research and uh, malware hunting. And I will do this talk in Froglish. I will do my best to have the best French accent. Uh, <laughs> so why I'm here, I'm going to speak about uh, WinDBG. Just for information, who knows uh, WinDBG in the room? Uh, not so bad. And uh, one thing is uh, I have to deal a lot with uh, .NET binary more and more, and uh, a lot of PowerShell script. And PowerShell is in fact uh, developed in, in .NET, use a .NET API. And due to uh, this quantity of different sample I have to analyze every day, I started to to try to make some uh, automatic uh, stuff. And I was trying to get uh, automatically information from sandbox, virtual machine, or, or stuff like that. And I decided to to start to understand how to debug .NET uh, with WinDBG to, to be able to automatically uh, extract, I don't know, uh, configuration or stuff like that. And I will present you uh, how you can do that. So first thing first, how you say WinDBG? So, I create my own survey and I took the survey from someone else and the results are exactly the opposite. So I don't know if I must say WinDBG or WinDebug or WinDbag. I don't know. So I will say WinDBG, uh, except if someone of the room is really, really strict with, that, with this, this fact and one I say WinDebug. But uh, just for people that don't really know where we are, we are just here. WinDebug or WinDBG is a Microsoft debugger. It's free. You can get it for free. And one of the biggest advantage uh, is it perfectly know Windows system. You have PDB support. You can have a lot of internal information from Windows uh, on this application. And uh, it supports 32 and 64 bits. You have the same command for both architecture. It, it works well. It's used by Microsoft. The thing is, uh, the user interface is not really user friendly. You will see, I will make some demo today. You, you will see the syntax is pretty weird. And they don't really have a natively uh, scripting language. So today it's a little bit different. They're working on new version and they perfectly support JavaScript. So you can develop in JavaScript inside of of uh, WinDBG. But in my case, I decided to, to develop in Python with an extension because I don't like JavaScript, basically. So I've got two first slides about uh, only few comments uh, I will use for the demo simply for people to, to understand what, what I will do. The first thing is every command starting with D, something, D, B, D, A, etc. The D is for display. The purpose is simply to display data in memory. For example, you have DB that show you exactissimal value and strings. Uh, ASCII characters on, on the on the right, and after the DB you have the address you want to see. So it's nothing more. The second letter is simply the uh, output. I want ASCII. I want hexadecimal. I want hexadecimal and ASCII, etc. I will use sometimes B for breakpoint. Same thing. Everything start by B. You've got BP for breakpoint, BL for to list breakpoint, BD to disable, enable, etc. So. The syntax is more or less always the same. B followed by, by uh, what you want to do with, uh, with breakpoint. So something a little bit specific is on WinDBG, you can breakpoint uh, on uh, event. So the last line, the A6E, is a breakpoint when the library, library in my case, will be loaded. So it's really powerful because typically, uh, imagine you you work on, on a malware that is uh, loaded inside of Explorer, for example, you can set to WinDBG, I want to breakpoint when my malware will be loaded. And you simply wait this time. Uh, if you work on kernel space, you can say, I want to breakpoint when this driver will be loaded. Exactly the same command. So uh, you can write memes, so take stuff from memory and write on the file to, to log it. Nothing really. Uh, Awesome. Uh, you can list loaded module, list exist, um, exported uh, function, etc. Uh, you 
the link here, you've got a, a documentation. It's not the official documentation. The official documentation is too big, but it's a really a nice cheat sheet to have basically all the most important command. Normally with this documentation, you have 90% of what you did for normal daily work. So for the moment, I only speak about uh, unmanaged code. So C, C++, this kind of stuff. But you have an extension that probably nobody uh, use except me, is SOS. And it uh, includes the support of .NET debugging inside of WinDBG. So when you load this uh, extension, you have additional uh, command. And this command only work on .NET uh, application. And it's, it's at this time it becomes really interesting. Typically, if in .NET you have assembly load function, uh, you can breakpoint when assembly load will be loaded uh, in WinDBG. So it will breakpoint on specific .NET function inside of uh, of uh, WinDBG. It's not uh, uh, C API or C++ API. It's really .NET, and it's really interesting. Uh, the good point is uh, on .NET you can have the same function with different kind of argument, different uh, kind type of argument. So one function can be in fact, uh, can in fact be five different functions because it's the same name for the developers, but depending the number of arguments, the type of argument, etc., it will execute a different one uh, from assembly point of view. And it's natively support this thing. Typically uh, assembly loads, uh, you have eight different assembly loads in .NET. Developers don't realize they have eight different, but in fact you have eight different. And when you use BPMD, it will automatically breakpoint on the eight APIs for you. It's really nice. If you are used to debug C or C++ application, you you often play with a stack to get arguments, for example, and stuff like that. And you have the same kind of thing on .NET application, and you can use CLR stack minus p in this case, and you will have the stack of a .NET application. Typically, I will use it to get arguments. To get the first argument, the second argument, they will be on the .NET stack. You can dump an object, a .NET object, and when you dump the .NET object, the screenshot is really crappy, I will show you, you can have every uh, attribute of an object. So if the first attribute is file name and is a strings, you can get it directly from WinDBG. You have the complete documentation of SOS. I will use, I think, three function of the, the extension, but you have a lot of, uh, you can monitor a memory leak on the .NET application, extra, extra, it's really powerful, not only for, for malware reverser, but for developers, simply. So, I think the best thing is to show you some example how I use uh, WinDBG for .NET application, and the first thing is PowerShell. So, I start uh, another uh, server on Twitter. Uh, who in the room use WinDBG to debug PowerShell script? Yeah, nobody. The thing is, normally, if you have to deal with PowerShell, you simply read the PowerShell and, and it's over. You read the code, you know what it performs. And... But imagine I give you 10,000 of script with more or less the same behavior, but not exactly the same obfuscation or not exactly the same compression. Uh, or encryption, whatever. I don't think you will open on Notepad 10,000 uh, tab to read uh, PowerShell. So in this case, I decided to make uh, automatization thanks to, to WinDBG, execute on VM every script and get the information I want to, to get. Why .NET? Because I explained PowerShell, in fact, use the .NET uh, framework behind. So it, it's a really weird stuff. If you reverse it, it's developed in C++, but it's a wrapper to .NET framework. So in background, they use uh, .NET. If you are used to, to analyze malware uh, uh, PowerShell script, you can see a lot of usage of uh, uh, unmanaged code. Typically, you can use virtual alloc by making some uh, some tricks like on the screenshot. In this case, it's no big deal. You can simply breakpoint on virtual alloc and you get the data. It's not really what I want to, to talk about, but you can do it. Uh, 
In my case, I want, for example, to, to work on, on, on start process. Imagine I've got 10,000 scripts that finish always by start process. I want to log a start process uh, argument. I can do it. So I hope it won't finish in failcon, but everything is possible. Yeah, it's not a good application. A wrong reflex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always launch IDA. Uh, I'm gonna increase the font for you, so I can directly attach my debugger to PowerShell here. Yeah. At this time, I'm attached to, to PowerShell application. Typically, I cannot do anything. The application is stopped by the debugger. And at this time, I'm going to load the SOS extension. So I'm going to load uh, the support of .NET uh, command inside of my, uh, of my debugger. So it works. And I'm going to breakpoint on a process start API. So the first argument is a Windows DLL where the function is located. Uh, it's always documented when you go on uh, MSDN documentation of uh, process start. It will at the bottom of the page you will have the, the DLL where is located this function. Yeah, something really good with uh, WinDBG. You must sometime execute command twice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it, it's really really fun. Generally, when I was trying my Parents said to me, don't do twice the same things. It's stupid. No, no, it's not. So at this time, you can see uh, six method was detected. So you have six different process start on .NET, depending on if you put a strings, two strings, if you put an array or whatever. And this, this time, I put go. So the application is started. No, I can do something on it. And I do my start dash process calc dot exe. And here you can see debugger stopped because start process was executed at this time. Uh, yeah, I'm lazy, I copy paste. And at this time, I can show the stack. So show different uh, argument executed function, etc. So it's pretty big. But the first one. Yep, here. Yeah, the first one you've got start process, and the argument is a process start info structure. If you're lazy like me, you click. And here you've got the structures, and you've got all the attributes of, the, of, of these specific structures. So, first one is file name, you click. And you've got a strings.net uh, object. And here you've got the calc.exe, so exactly the argument I put. But you can have additional information. For example, you've got directory. So on this structure, you must set a directory. You can see I simply start calc.exe. I didn't put any directory. But by default, if you execute something, it's executed from your home. So in this case, you've got a user's Lucifer. It's my home. And uh, yeah, at this time you are able to get uh, information about uh, structures put in argument of uh, of this uh, .NET application. So basically, the dump OBG is what is performed when you click uh, in WinDBG. For for people that really like uh, assembly, you can get information from register. You can get the value uh, in the register here. And finally, perform display. What is at this address? Oops. And yeah, you directly get the string. So you can really make some automatization without clicking and without passing output in WinDBG because WinDBG is not really easy to pass. You can see you've got stuff everywhere. So yeah. It's something uh, you, you you can do. Another example, I, I won't do it because it's more or less the same thing. You can imagine you want you, you have a malware that download uh, executable or whatever on the website using always the same uh, API, download file, typically a lot of uh, ransomware 
download payload on the internet and use PowerShell script and use download file. But you have different kind of obfuscation, so you cannot really easily get uh, the URL. But in this case, you can simply breakpoint on download file, and you've got the information. It breakpoint. Yeah, you can uh, directly get in registry the first argument. In my case, it's uh, HTTP block intelligence.com and the second argument is where the file will be stored on the machine. And at this time, you can, for example, download it, put it on a shell directory, and get all the downloaded sample automatically. It's it's not really complicated, and it works. Yeah, you've got a, a screenshot of of uh, the full automated process where uh, I, I got the URL and the file name and the file execution. It's typically what ransomware did uh, when, uh, when they used PowerShell script to execute uh, the second stage. So it's okay for, for, for PowerShell. And as I said, it's .NET. And I don't know for you, but I, I receive more and more crappy .NET packer. And it simply unpacks stuff, decrypt, decor, decompress, or do what you want. And uh, after you got a, a second PE file, and this PE file is loaded in memory and executed. It's more or less always the same philosophy, but not exactly the same obfuscation technique and, and stuff like that. Here, uh, it's an example. It's uh, I don't remember, I think it's a remote administration tool that use strings in, looks like, China attribution, no? And uh, in this case, uh, a XOR is performed here between two array, and it uh, decodes the data after he has a new P file, a new binary, and use assembly load to load it in memory and execute it. I found another sample that did exactly the same thing, but instead of using XOR uh, techniques, he used um, encryption, yes, encryption. But the philosophy is the same, is the same. Doing something with data, at the end you have a PE file, and it's loaded in memory thanks to uh, assembly load. For people that are not used to play with .NET, assembly load is a really easy uh, function. You put a byte array in argument, this byte array is a MZ, a P file, a Windows binary, and it's loaded in memory and executed. It's really easy, really uh, straightforward. So you can do uh, the same thing. I can show you. So here is a sample in, in, uh, with Chinese language. Uh, you've got uh, the XOR here. Here is the XOR function. And later, you've got the assembly load here of the uh, decoded data. So as I don't want to execute, yeah, just one thing. WinDBG is a debugger. We have some people that call us because they execute my script on the real machine and they encrypted the file system. So no, it's not an emulator, it's a debugger. So don't execute stuff on your machine. But for the demo, I create a simple uh, packer that do more or less the same thing. I got my malicious pylon. It's open and lowered. I did the base64 on it here, and after the packer takes these strings, decode in base64, and performs the uh, assembly load uh, somewhere later. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he performs the assembly load on this uh, decoded data. So it's more exactly what the malware did, but I, I rewrite it to to be sure. Uh, it's safe for my my machine. So let's play with it. Um, no. Just gonna increase the font. So execute my uh, packed sample here. So, WinDBG start to execute uh, the sample and stopped at the beginning of the execution. Normally at this time, I must uh, load 
the SOS extension, but the thing is, WinDBG uh, breaks so early that the .NET framework is not loaded in the process. So as the .NET framework is not loaded in the process, if I try to load a uh, SOS extension, it will fail because WinDBG will say, it's not a .NET application, you don't have the .NET framework. So you must put the first breakpoint when the framework is loaded, and at this time you are able to, to load uh, the .NET extension. So I put a breakpoint when .NET framework is loaded, I execute, no .NET is loaded. And at this time I'm able to uh, put uh, the breakpoint. Uh, I'm able to load uh, SOS extension. So same thing than previously, high breakpoint when uh, assembly load is executed. Twice, like previously. <laughs> and I start uh, the execution of my uh, sample. It's stopped, so it stopped at the uh, load uh, uh, assembly load uh, execution. I display the stack exactly as previously. You got assembly load here, byte array. You can click on it, and at this time you can see it's a MZ. This program cannot be blah blah blah. So it's the beginning of of the PE file, the decompress, and best 64 in my case, but you have the PE file directly uh, at this time. Oops, oh. Yeah, it's uh, what I showed to you. Uh, you can directly get it from uh, from a registry and dump it on, on file. Yeah, it's probably small for you, but it's a script that automatically unpack a lot of similar sample on a virtual machine. So, all the demo are really manual. You must put breakpoint break and go and stop and extract. extra. So we created a, a small Python script. You can, uh, you need Python extension. So by default, WinDBG does not support Python. So you need to, to add a, a Python extension. It's PYKD. It's uh, open source, but you have pre-compiled by now. It's really easy to use. You must Take our script, of course. It's available on, on Cisco Talos uh, in GitHub. And what is the purpose of this, the script? You put some uh, configuration. You say, I want to monitor, I don't know, download file. I want to monitor process create. I want to monitor load assembly. And for each function you set, it will, if it's a uh, start process typically, it will log for you every uh, strings and integer. If it's uh, assembly load, he will dump on file every byte array in argument of assembly load, etc. And the output will be in JSON if you need to pass it for project or what you want. Here is uh, an example of output. So it's for a start process. You have the function name here. It will show you each argument. For example, the first arg argument number zero is file name and you have the strings calc.exe the second argument uh, is argument is the argument of the start process in this case it's a string and it's empty etc etc the third one is a directory and you can get the directory so each time one of the attribute is a string of or an integer it will show you this information so uh, if I start a new PowerShell and attach my debugger on it, uh, switch. So, first task. Uh, I load SOS extension, always the same thing. I want .NET support. I load PKD, so I load uh, Python uh, support. And finally, I execute my script. Yeah, so 
in my case, I can show you the script, it's here. I decided to breakpoint on start process, download file, assembly load, so exactly the free demo I show you. It automatically uh, put all the breakpoint on, on this API. And I execute a character.exe, so it's a little bit longer because everything is locked. And here, if I this right point is start process uh, and process start info structures and you've got character.exe, empty strings, uh, my home, extra, extra. So everything will be automatically uh, displayed in, uh, in JSON and you've got a special flag name uh, byte array here and if it's a byte array, it will be dumped on the file, on your file system. So you can directly uh, get dropped a file like that really, really easily. So, yeah. My goal was really to show you that sometimes uh, using really weird application because nobody thinks WinDBG when you speak about PowerShell script because it more or less doesn't make any sense for individual analysis. But if uh, you need for any reason to, to scale on hundreds or thousands uh, investigation, it can be really uh, powerful to automate uh, a lot of tasks. WinDBG perfectly support .NET application. So, each time you have a, an update on .NET, etc., it works perfectly on, on WinDBG. It's not a, a big issue. Today, you don't. It's really hard to to develop on WinDBG and perform script. I decided to use a Python support, but you have a JavaScript support, so you can make a lot of stuff in JavaScript if it's uh, easier for you. I had uh, some question. I will. Uh, reply to the question before you ask. The first thing a lot of people say to me, does it work in JavaScript? So no, it does not work in JavaScript because the JavaScript uh, script on Windows does not use the .NET framework. So in this case, it's pure C++. C++. But uh, I create a blog post on, on, on Talos uh, where I explain how, um, how do exactly this, uh, how you can do exactly the same on JavaScript application. So how to breakpoint on eval typically, uh, how breakpoint on uh, specific, um, specific uh, download file and stuff like that API, uh, how the argument are stored uh, on, on inside of uh, the JavaScript interpreter, etc. So it's not so easy because uh, it does not use .NET uh, framework, but you can do it. I, I make some example of automatization on, on JavaScript uh, script. So you can do the same. It's simply a new project, completely different from script point of view, but, but yes, you can. You can basically do that on every script language if you have interpreter. And the good thing on Microsoft, you have the PDB. So you have the PDB file of the JavaScript interpreter, so you can breakpoint on internal function. You have the name. You can guess uh, it's eval or it's this kind of thing, and, and finally it works. So my uh, script only support pure.net or PowerShell. So if you have question, uh, feel free. If you are shy and you don't want to speak in front of everybody, I will be in the in the room for the rest of the day. Got a question here. So at times I'll see a PowerShell script download and another PowerShell script that's in, uh, encrypted or obfuscated, and it would be nice if we could stop the execution just before that PowerShell script is executed. I'm wondering if you like yeah. p invoke. Have you played with that at all? Is that a good place to it, pause execution? Yeah. In in my case, uh, I do it in uh, in several uh, step. Firstly, I download every first stage and I make a triage on it. And if I got new PowerShell script, I put it on the system. But I work step by step. I don't make uh, inception uh, of PowerShell because uh, I don't think it would be really stable. And uh, But yeah, I download every downloaded stuff. If it's P file, it's okay. If it's another script, I will uh, analyze it. And if it's data, it's a specific case because it does not really download executable stuff, but data that it 
unzip or whatever. And in this case, it, it's not automatic. You need to use classical sandbox or whatever. I was just wondering if I could use this as some kind of uh, easy way to deobfuscate some PowerShell, and I was wondering if you knew a good spot to pause. It, you, it, it, it's not magic, but you can probably work on eval, eval-like stuff. So you can directly get strings before execution. So you can do this kind of thing, yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? I was so clear. <laughs> Well, you said you answered the question yourself. <laughs> and if you're shy, well, you can see Paul yeah, later outside. Course. Okay, thank you very much, Paul.